analyzing resistors. So first, what is a resistor? Well, it's a two terminal electrical component, has two wires coming out of it, and it's partially conductive. And it does that to limit the current that flows through it. And we can do voltage dividers and voltage dividers are used for, for amplifiers or stepping down a voltage or any number of other things. And these resistors come in a variety of forms and shapes. We would like to apply our electromagnetic knowledge to derive the resistance given the shape of the resistor. So here's our analysis setup. We have some strangely shaped thing and we look at its cross section. Its cross section has an area S. Let this structure here have conductivity sigma. And so what we do then, we apply a voltage V, it passes a current I, so V over I gives us the resistance, but how can we calculate what that resistance is from an electromagnetic analysis? So let's do a derivation of the resistance when this has uniform conductivity. We start with Ohm's law. So the electric current density is the conductivity times the electric field intensity. Well, the electric field intensity is the applied voltage divided by the length of the resistor. So the electric current density is then the total current divided by the surface area. But we also have an expression for the current density up here using Ohm's law. That's sigma times E. Well, E is the applied voltage divided by the length, so we can replace E. Now we can set I over S equal to sigma V over L. We rearrange this a little bit. So we bring V on the top, we'll bring I to the denominator, we'll bring the sigma and L over to the other side, and we end up with this expression. Well, V over I is the definition of resistance. So for this resistor, the expression on the right side of the equation is how we would calculate the resistance. So the final equation for the resistance of something that has uniform conductivity is simply the length of that device divided by the conductivity and divided by the surface area of the cross section. And we could do it in terms of the material's resistivity. This is not charge density now. It's a reuse of the same variable, but we can have resistivity, which is just the reciprocal of conductivity. So resistivity times the length divided by surface area. Well, what if that conductivity is not uniform? Now we have to use electromagnetic analysis to derive the voltage and the current and relate them to get the resistance. So the voltage across the conductor, well, we would use a line integral of the electric field intensity. The current through the conductor, we would integrate the electric current density. And so the resistance V over I is simply these two integrations divided by each other. Let's lay out a general recipe for doing electromagnetic analysis to calculate the resistance of a resistor. It starts by choosing a convenient coordinate system. So we look at the shape of the resistor. If it looks cubish or rectangular-ish, well, Cartesian coordinates is probably the best coordinate system. If it looks like a tube or cylinder, probably cylindrical coordinates will be best. If it looks like a sphere, then probably spherical coordinates would be best. The next thing is we will assume the voltage across the resistor is V naught. So we won't do electro, electromagnetic analysis to calculate that. We will assume that V naught is applied. Well, if we know the potential on both of the plates because we've just assumed it, then we can solve Laplace's equation between the plates to calculate the potential at all points and positions between the plates. Given the electric potential between the plates, the negative gradient gives us the electric field intensity. Well, if we know the conductivity of the material between the plates, then the conductivity times the electric field gives us the electric current density. So if we integrate that in the cross section of the resistor, we will get total current due to the applied voltage V naught. 
Now we're in a position to calculate the resistance because we've assumed the applied voltage. We've derived the current, so the applied voltage divided by current gives us the resistance. And as a final note, the resistance of this structure should only be a function of its geometry and the conductivity of the medium between the plates. So if your applied voltage or current is left over in the final equation, then you've made a mistake somewhere and use this as a self check to make sure you haven't made any errors. If the applied voltage and current is not in your equation, that's not a sure thing you haven't made mistakes, but if they do appear in your equation, that definitely means you have made mistakes. We'll end this with the simplest of resistors, the parallel plate resistor, two metal plates on the either side of some partially conductive medium that we've labeled with the sigma, and it has a gap distance of D, and a surface area of S in the cross section. Well, the resistance of this is the length of the resistor D divided by the conductivity sigma and also divided by the cross-sectional surface area S.